you this get, conference um, will now be recorded. If you can get a paper and a pen handy just to make sure that you can write some things down and so you can share when I ask you to share, that's okay. I'll give you guys a couple of minutes just because that wasn't in the meeting notes and then we can get started. You can take a uh, you can take notes on the lab tie at the top like official. Yeah, I'm struggling with my computer today because my wireless trackpad died and we don't have any batteries. <laughs> so I've got this tiny little like thing that doesn't reach anything. It's so I'm like <laughs> oh, the little catastrophes. There were two batteries in the top desk drawer. Oh, right here? Yeah, they were there oh, last yeah, week, they're... well, the week before. Boom, got it. All right, I'll switch them out. Thank you. How do you know my house better than I do? Crazy. I All right. Up the well, you were in the oh, you're breaking up really bad. Can everybody, is this a good connection? Can everybody hear me okay? Yeah, okay. Just a thumbs up is all I need. That's great. All right, thank you. So um, I guess it was, uh, how many years ago is that? I guess it was almost a, a, almost a year and a half ago or two years that I wrote this book and it came out. And so in talking about um, tonight's topic, uh, Michelle thought it would be a really fun thing to do uh, kind of a finished first talk. So, um, you know, Finish First was kind of a movement we tried to, you know, kind of create uh, around the last Olympics. And it was, it came out of a bunch of conversations I had with a friend of mine who is an author and who runs a big consulting media marketing company. And I told him, I go, I've been given the same talk for a long time. I, can you come help me sort of identify something that I could um organically talk about that would be beneficial to a broad group of people, whether it be in business or education, sports, or just day-to-day -day life. And he goes, sure, I can do that for you. Give, give me a few weeks to think about it, and then we can reconvene, and we set up a meeting date a few weeks later. And so we met um, at the Fordyce Center, and we sat around one of the party room tables, and he said, so I've been racking my brain for the last several weeks, and I didn't have anything until last night. <laughs> and so it was like, okay, well, that's spontaneous. And he goes, no, no, I was talking to my wife, and I was telling her what your goals and ask, you know, what you wanted to do. And, and, and uh, she said, well, I mean, think about the first question you ever asked him. And he said, well, I thought about it for a minute. And he asked me, he said, what it's, what's it like to win an Olympic gold medal? What does that feel like? Um, but he said, no, but it wasn't about that because that's sort of like a, a very specific goal with a very small window or whatever. He goes, I wanted to talk about something that is broader and, um, and more attainable and more um, that really reaches out to everyone in a way that it's personal and it's also aspirational and it's also psychological, it's got all these different layers to it. And I said, well, hit me. And he goes, finishing first, what is that like? <laughs> and I said, well, it's a process. It's not a destination. And he, he said, oh, okay. So we talked about all the different ways that people could wrap their head around um, this movement created around finishing first. Now, here's the first question to y'all, okay? Um, what does finishing first mean to you? Just think about it for a second. And anytime anybody's got an answer that they want to share, just chime in. What is finishing first? What does that mean to you? Open discussion. Anyone? All right, I'm going to pick on somebody. Stephen, what does it mean to you to finish first? Well, fit to me, what I let my students know, finishing first is them doing their personal best and being happy with what they put out. Um, I tell my students that I don't want them even thinking about 
competing against other people. I just want them trying to do their personal best. And we usually are trying to either land a new jump or get a new personal best uh, high score for their IJS. So mm -hmm. for me, finishing first, uh, I think means just doing your best, doing your, your best work and um, working hard and enjoying what you do. That's awesome answer. That's a really great <laughs> answer. When we, it is, it's a perfect answer. Because when we wrote the book, it said, you know, to me, winning is not about holding a gold medal, losing the 20 pounds, getting a promotion, or seeing my name on a plaque. Um, bah, 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 bah. Uh, it's um, what I found to be the most interesting is what I was becoming in the process of achieving something unthinkable. When I talk about finishing first, I'm not talking about just beating your competitors. To finish first is to understand what you have to offer the world and then to be the best you can be at offering exactly that. It means understanding your life purpose and putting your whole heart into being the best at the best at what you do. Um, and then it goes on from there. But that's it. That's the right answer, Stephen. It's not about it's not about being, you know, rising, you know, just beating down the competition. It's not about, um, you know, standing on the top of a podium. It's about finishing first is, is really truly about being the best you can be at the time. And in that being better than you've ever been, it's, it's aspirational. It's, um, it, it's, you're always reaching forward. You're always testing your abilities. You're always trying to get to the next, to the next, to the next. And in that way, it's sort of like finishing first is like playing whack-a-mole. <laughs> you know, it's like, have you ever played whack-a-mole? You know, it's like, oh, bam, got that, oh, that, bam. Going in there. It's always something else popping up. And it's, you can't get to the next mole until you whack this mole down, right? And so you, you focus on whatever that challenge is, whatever that thing is that you're trying to get better at, what you're trying to aspire to be, right there, whack-a-mole, and then, oh. There's another one over there. And this one might be a little bigger. This one might be a little tougher. This one might be a little stronger, but you can never get to that hole unless you whack this one first, right? So, um, so everybody out there, I want you to just write down one thing that if it were you right now coming up with sort of your, your next finish first, what would that look like? And I'll give you a couple minutes. Everybody ready? Yeah. All right, Jamie, what's yours? Oh, well, mine is passing my novice free skate. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a great piece. That, that's now you're further along than you were before and you're better than you've ever been, right? That's kind of the definition. Um, Abby and Scarlett, what did you write down? Uh, I said landing a dub, my double axel in a competition and getting high GOEs on my spins. Great. And all right. Yeah. My Go ahead. landing all of my doubles. Great. So see what I mean? You're you're putting yourself out there in a really specific way, and you're really trying to get to that. And and here's my win. This is what it feels like to win today. How about you, Maria? What did you write down? Um, to land my double axel in competition. There you go. See, that's a win. That that all counts. Abby, what do you think? Mine's also landing my double axel. There you go. Okay, we got some double axel classes coming up. Kelly, what did you write down? Hmm. Um, I wrote um, finishing school with a 4.0 and um, getting closer to my double axle. Well, that, that the first one is a goal that would never be mine because <laughs> it's unattainable. <laughs> uh, but that's fantastic. 
I, Athena, what did you write down? <laughs> Corey. <laughs> So, of course, I took it eight steps further and I broke it into different parts of my life. So I have oh, a stop. financial finish first. <laughs> yeah. I have an emotional finish first. I have a professional finish first. I have a parental finish first. And um, I guess the one that provides me with the most comedy when I read it, since we got absolutely nothing done this week, would be to uh, parentally finishing first would mean to successfully homeschool the rest of this year. Uh, and that's just not going to happen, but I am going to do everything I can. I'm going to read your book six more times to uh, make sure that I have all the tips and tricks to finishing first um, nah. in my back pocket. Well, that's pretty, that's a lot. Yeah, I mean, it's like I can't ask you to do one thing, Corey. It's got to be, oh, will you do this one thing? Yes. But... <laughs> like, I know. Hey, well, I, I, I can't have one goal, right? Like it's, it's too multi-layered, so... <laughs> So thanks yeah. for asking me and just confusing everybody. I appreciate that. No, that's good. No, but that's it. I mean, you have more responsibilities than anybody, right? You know, you're, you're taking on a lot and, and it's all begins and um, stays and ends with you. So that's, that's great. That's really awesome. How about you, Jennifer? Did, what did you write down? Um, I wrote down to get through this quarantine because I don't, Tend, I tend not to stock up on food, so um, that, but then as a coach, just helping my students get uh, accomplish their goals, I have a student that is uh, getting ready to take her senior moves in the field, so I would like to be there for her to help her with that. That's great. That's awesome. And Susie, what did you write down? I actually wrote down making the most of each sorry making the most of each practice because I'm not going to be able to achieve the things I want to if I'm not starting there. See, that's the trap. That's the trap. See, the idea of finishing first isn't so much of you know, if I'm not here then it's then it's it's too disappointing or it's it's going to be you know, beneath what I'd really like to do. The, the idea of finishing first is to keep pushing the envelope and you can't play whack-a-mole. You can't until you get the first one down. So breaking it down to smaller attainable goals is a, is a way to constantly fill that bucket of like, I'm winning, I'm winning, I'm winning, I'm winning. So, you know, don't, I know you, everybody's like, oh man, I wish I was like, I wish I was six foot four, full head of hair down on my shoulders and had like, you know, uh, you know, pecs out to here. No, it's it's just, it, <laughs> we'll get to that later, but it's like, how about, like, I'm going to be leaner and more fit and more able to kind of like interact with and play with my kids at my age than I ever thought possible. Win, right? So it's, it's all about that. It's all about um, goals are never ending, but it's about creating an atmosphere where you can, where you can win. Win, when doesn't have to be gigantic wins. You don't have to win the Olympics. Like I never even had the Olympics on my radar until four years before. Like it, it was just not, I mean, it was not, no, there's no chance. Right. So as things come up, it reveals that next mole. Right. So, you know, I got to hit this one down. Yes, I win. Okay. got to hit this one down. Now what that, what's that going to take? So, um, the next part I want to talk about is is sort of um, a more kind of it's more of like accounting, right? So um, I wrote in here because it's 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 really meant for a lot of people from different walks of life. But we're talking about skating here. But skating within the skating world has many different layers and many different facets and identities and everything else. And so um, the next thing I want to talk about is like it's it's all about purpose. It's all about knowing who we are and knowing what we're about and knowing what um what our purpose is does can anyone like just off lexi if i had to like put your feet to the fire right now and say define purpose how would you define purpose kind of like um what we're meant for in life mm -hmm. like that's what i would say it is so yeah okay it's nice and broad i like it now, how do you get there, Michelle? How do you get there to, to understand and to reveal your purpose? Michelle Doyle. Sorry, Michelle Thornberry. <laughs> mm. 
No, your microphone's not on. Oh, there it is. Technologically slow here. Um, I, I think a lot of soul searching, a lot of working through the process of figuring out what you like and what you're good at and how you can impact people with, with that. And that's, is it physical? Is it difficult? Is it yeah. physical? Is physical? it emotional? It's emotional. It's is it intellectual? I think it's everything. It's our whole being, right? Yeah, right. So you leverage everything. So basically, I want you all to kind of just think about it for a minute. Take accounting of your skill sets. Take an accounting, basically, of our first thing when you're looking at what your, your next finish first looks like. And just take an accounting of what you have within you, what you are about that really feels like you can leverage that into a purpose or something that can take you to the next place. Just think about that for a minute. We'll share in just a second. What do you mean by that? Hi, Izzy. Hi. Um, How are you? Good. <laughs> what do you mean by that? Well, what I mean is, in order to understand your purpose, it's almost like it's trying to understand who, where you fit into the world and where you best can leverage your um, uniqueness towards uh, um, taking your uniqueness and putting it towards something that would really where you could be super successful now you found skating and you're really good at it and you keep going improving really fast so you're you, i guess you could think more about um you know what makes you special what makes you different um what do you have that none of your non-skating friends have something you know, stuff like that to think about so just take an accounting and i am going to go right to uh, who am I going to pick on? Uh, Tate, have you figured that out yet? <laughs> Not yet? Okay. How about you, Janice? I'm trying to process, but I guess at first um, I joined uh, the Theater on Ice team near me, so trying to find a purpose where I'm not the best skater, but I bring, I'm an international thespian from high school, so I'm adding the element of the acting is my strong suit that I can offer to my team, and then they're helping me improve on my skating, so it's kind of that give and take balance. Mm -hmm. That's great, and that's a finish first also moment, is getting on that team and really being a, a productive member. Allie, how about you? No, 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 not there. Aurora, what do you choose? Write down. Your mic's not on. There it is. Oh, sorry. I'd say I'd I'd feel really happy. I can't believe I get to talk to you. Wow. Oh. I'd feel really happy. <laughs> I'd feel like I'd won. If I got all my doubles by the end of the year, I'd feel really satisfied. I'd feel like I did I would do good. If I if I could perform if every time I practiced my programs or something, they were always clean. Even though yeah. that's not really possible. That would be nice. Yeah, it is. When, it's very possible. When I could Okay, cool. If I weren't well, Allie, nervous when oh, I competed, even if I didn't place, I'd still feel like I won. Okay. Well, that's if great. That well, I see sense. the medals on your wall, so you must be doing something right. Um. <laughs> Those were from basic skills. Oh, uh, that's still, it doesn't matter. A win's a win. How about you, Allie? What'd you write down? Thank you. You, uh, what did I write down for the next thing I want to finish first? No, that know your purpose. Purpose. Oh, um, for me, I think my purpose is uh, just achieving my goal. And uh, I don't do ice skating. My parents told me about this for a more of the mindset thing. 
awesome. I do a team sport. I do competitive cheerleading. And more, my purpose is helping my team out and really doing everything I can for me and my team. That's great. Now, what is it about you? What's your role on your team? What do you think your strengths are? What are your the things that you do that really make you stand out? Um, I have really high level tumbling for my team, so I can really help out um, in that aspect and flying as well. Oh, being great. a flyer, top girl. So you must be little. Because my wife was at the top of the pyramid when she did all that stuff, and they threw her around like crazy, and she's little. So yeah. that's great. <laughs> awesome. Mm -hmm. So the whole idea about knowing your purpose is, is to really look at, you know, am I musical? Like, as far as just the skating side of it, am I musical? Am I um, athletic? Do I skate with speed? Do I, do I, um, am I, uh, ex am I artistic? Do I really share? Do I, am I high energy? Am I intimate? Am I um, just putting all my eggs in the athletics or in the excellence basket? What what are what are the things about me that are really super comfortable that allow m me to kind of take those skills and rise above and and really leverage every single one of those? And as you do that, we're going to get to that in a little bit. Um, you know, you find yourself getting stronger, you find yourself becoming more confident, and you really enjoy things in a different way because once you repeat these steps over and over and over again, um, they become simpler, easier, more comfortable. Like I was always a really shy performer. I like to perform, but only on my own terms and in front of a couple of different people. But I didn't really have that choice. I had to perform in front of a lot of people. And so I had to break down my inhibitions. And it took me some time. But it's like the more you put yourself out there, the more you experiment, the more you do those things, the more you realize that this other part of you comes alive and you're able to do things in a way that you never thought you could do them before. So understanding your purpose is like, okay, I've committed to this path. How do I leverage my uniqueness in order to make it better um, or to rise up as, as much as I can by leveraging those qualities. All right, the next thing we're gonna talk about is committing to the long haul. <clears throat> All right, this one, this one kind of gets a little bit, what do you mean it's gonna take me a year to get my double axle? <laughs> what do you mean it's gonna take me blah, blah, blah? You know, it, it's, it's so interesting to think about the whole commitment thing. You know, you show up every day, you work really hard, you do all these things, but nothing is instant gratification, especially in skating. Nothing is instant gratification. Everything takes time. So what does that look like? What it looks like is in order to get to double axle, you pretty much got to knock through each of your doubles, you know, so you get the idea of rotation, you get the strength and air position. Because without those strengths, without those techniques, without those abilities, you're going to have a hard time doing double axle and triples. So there's a long haul aspect to all of that. So, um, okay. Um, the, the, the questions here um, is what does that long haul look like to you? What is, what is your idea of what, what, what takes too long? Are you super impatient? Are you super meticulous about acquiring the muscles and the repetition and the skill sets it takes to get to that goal? Are you gonna to be too impatient or are you willing? Can you build habits of contentment, but also attached to commitment and also attached to perseverance, right? So it comes down to um, committed to the long haul. Um, it, it, it's basically, I um, mean, I wish I had that picture. There's a picture um, I have when I do this speech and, and, and it's a picture of a store, you know, those orange storage areas that you can rent per month. Well, there's an orange storage area and um, in that storage area is a set of drums, right? And so, uh, <laughs> so from nine to five, this guy works at a normie job and his goal is to be a really great session player or a musician in Nashville in the most competitive music market in the United States. And so from 
from five o'clock, he goes to get something quick to eat. And then he goes into the storage area every single day and he plays drums till at least 10 o'clock. If anybody asks him, uh, you want to go out to a drinks? You want to go to a movie? Do you want to go have something? He goes, no, I'm, I'm drumming. I'll catch you on the weekend. <laughs> right? So he is so committed to the long haul of building those skill sets and that discipline of showing up every day and being uh, just making himself just a little stronger, a little stronger, a little, because he knows that I'm not going to get to where I want to be tomorrow, but it's if I stick with it and if I, if I really show up every single day, I know that ultimately I'm going to be as good as I can possibly be. And in that it will expose exactly um, what my, what, what what my what does my dream what does it look like so in that um how can you build um your habits of commitment what does that look like to you what does that look like? i haven't picked on somebody in a while how about harper what does that look like to you what's what's a habit of commitment what does that mean to you Oops, your mic's not on. No, oh, there it is. Oh, no, there it is. No, I can't hear you. Oh, there it is. Got it. Go ahead. Okay, it's not working very well. So we'll just, uh, we'll go on. Um, who can I talk to about this? I know who I can talk to. Corey, what is what is a what is a, a building habits of commitment look like to you? What does that say to you? Uh oh, she didn't get it either. I hope Mike Mike's on. There she is. Corey's Wi Fi has been a little off all day. <laughs> all right. Okay. Well, how about, uh, how about you, Michelle Thornberry? What does that look like to you? Building habits of commitment. It's taking little steps every day towards my goals, like finding mm -hmm. something that is achievable that I can do today um, that'll move me a little bit closer. Uh, yeah, that's it. I mean, that's, it's very simple. It's it's not really a complex concept, but it's it's kind of hard to do because we're so distracted. It's like you know, even here and during this coronavirus, we're kind of house hostages, right? But we're so addicted to the you know constant go 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 that it's like we're always looking for things to do because we're, our our days are so full. But if we can just be still for one second and look at that goal almost myopically, myopic means you're looking through a tiny little hole. If you could just look at it in a way that it's that that's the one thing, and I'm going to be so committed to that goal. And you know, it's like it's like even just blocking out the time it takes every single day or as often as you possibly can towards that goal, and don't let anything touch that window of time. You pull out your phone, make a um, iPhone calendar entry, and just just stick to it. Just say this is my time to achieve my goal, and. Um, uh, and 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 know that, you know, it's like here's a trick question: How do you know if you're on schedule to meet your goals? Right? There's really no way of knowing because sometimes you'll say, "My goal is to do this by this year," and you get to the end of that goal that day that you were, you put on your calendar. It's like I'm that close. It's going to take me another month or another two months, and then I'll be locked down. So committing to the long haul is really about being patient but being persistent. Patience and persistence patience and persistence it's about understanding that i if i wanted to be a bodybuilder it's not going to happen but if i were wanting to be a bodybuilder it would take some time I, i'm just not going to like poof, poof, and and be there the next day so committed to the long haul for all of you guys um it's equal parts you can write this down uh persistence and patience it's going to take a while for you to get there so this one's my favorite one. Um, well, there's a couple of favorite ones, but this one's next. Um, and that is overcoming your limitations. Now, all of us, um, <clears throat> all of us have uh, unique abilities, and then we have things that make things more challenging, right? 
Um, I remember a judge when I was competing internationally, she told my coach that it was really nice that I was doing better, but I was too short to ever be competitive internationally. Now, um, we'll get to that later in the criticism section, but right now I'm telling you, <laughs> I am short. I can't fix that, but, there, but it's overcoming, you know, whatever those limitations are. I, I'm not going to be as explosive as Brian Boitano. He's bigger, he's stronger than me. I'm not going to be as artistic as John Curry. He's just so dedicated to the arts. But I've got, I, I, I'm going to be the best that I can be with my, um, my skills, my, my, um, my qualities, as well as any limitations I possibly, um, you know, as I possibly can. So what do you think, like, if you were to think, look at me and my life and everything else, what do you think um, my criteria would be um, to be inspired by someone? What do you think, how do you think someone can inspire me? Kelly, what do you think? Um, well, I find someone that's inspiring is like someone that makes a difference and like puts like what like I guess talking about limitations like if you want to like overcome your limitations like something that inspires me is that they put like their goals over their limitations and so it just like like they just overcome them and I find that inspiring in someone so I think just like something that's inspiring is just people that like can like do that and just are like strong in that aspect. Yeah. It's, it, and it's all comes from your own personal point of view and your own personal, uh, you know, point of view, Steven, what, what inspires you? Um, you know, it's really, complicated I feel like no it's I think you can get in inspiration I get inspiration from my my two-year-old and my five-year-old and I get inspired by um, my own my students I feel that what inspires me the most over the years what I've seen is um, seeing a dedicated hard-working individual really inspires me whether that's in a music field or um, whether it's one of my athletes. Um, and I find, uh, you know, that, that that action inspires me. And, you know, I find that to be the hard work that uh, an athlete can put in, uh, I think is one of the most important things towards getting that goal that you were talking about. And I find that to be very inspiring. And how does that affect you? Does that make you want to rise up and be better, stronger, faster? I think it's kind of contagious. I feel that when I've got, you know, some days you come in and not every day, not every day everyone is feeling energetic, you know. Um, but on days where you you are on the rink and everyone is working hard and happy, and I feel like there's a good energy, and that that gives me energy. So I feel like a hard working environment is contagious and can give you. Um, energy and give you a, a positive good attitude so yeah that's awesome jennifer who inspires you what inspires you i would agree with um what was just said uh, a hard working atmosphere is very contagious and i've as i've traveled to different rinks i want to be at the ones that have that atmosphere where it's um, positive and and hardworking, and I feel that uh, Corey inspires me because she has that Yay. atmosphere. I Yay. went to Colorado and I saw that atmosphere, and then in Tennessee. So, yeah, she's pretty remarkable. Um, anybody else want to share? How about you, Shatara? I haven't picked on you yet. Maybe. Um, yeah what inspires me yeah where do you find um, inspiration i would have to say um wolves because oh, wow. it's kind of like a dog eat dog world out there and so <laughs> you kind of have yeah. to make yourself known and put yourself out there otherwise you're gonna be the omega and doing stuff for other people your whole life and 
never accomplishing what you want to accomplish. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. It's so personal because it's it's our life experiences that form where we it, where we get our inspiration. How about you, Michelle Doyle? What inspires you? That microphone button. We got to find that. <laughs> There. Oh. Can I throw one in really quick? Well, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Go for it, Michelle. Something that really inspires me is people's um, something that really inspires me is people's attitudes. You know, like if you come in with a really great attitude, no matter what your skill level is, I'm going to be inspired by you to want to keep maintain that level. Yeah. And I, I just want to share, you know, because I've had a lot of um, you know, talk about, you know, kind of my inventory of I get you know of, of um, identity or qualities or whatever I'm truly inspired by people that do things that I can't even imagine like I can't even imagine doing them um, two people that come to mind is um, Kyle Maynard if you've never heard of Kyle Maynard he climbed Mount Kilimanjaro Okay, well, you know, lots of people climb on Kilimanjaro, but he did it without arms and legs. Yeah, that to me is like, what What am I complaining about? What is my, What are my problems? This guy climbed with the ashes of a fallen shoulder soldier on his back. He climbed Mount Kilimanjaro without arms and legs. Kyle Maynard, look him up on the internet when we're done and you're gonna be so inspired by what this guy, he decided he was not going to let his limitations, his conditions to define what he was capable of doing. So overcoming limitations is I am not going to allow my condition, my uh, challenges to prevent me from achieving what I really want to achieve. Go ahead, Corey. I was I was going to say that what I wrote down is that I am inspired by challenges. I'm inspired by adversity. I feel like I am wired to be a problem solver. It's just in my nature to like there's everything is possible in my wiring and so when something doesn't feel like it's possible, it inspires me to make it so. So there I and I'm sorry I lost audio when you called on me earlier. A couple no, people no, are like, texting me and said I yeah. called out on it, but um, I I couldn't hear you and you couldn't hear me. So uh, anyway, but that's what inspires me. I'm super inspired by other people who are um, overcoming adversities and things like that. But I think when it comes to actually me, like not just being inspired, but taking the next step to motivation and the next step beyond motivation to action, it's got to be a challenge. Otherwise, yeah. I kind of lose. I I kind of lose interest in it. I'm like, oh, that's so cool. That person's amazing. Whoa, I'll never be able to do that. And I'm inspired, but it stops there. And so for me, the next step is being motivated to do it, and then taking action to see it be so. So that that's just my layers of thinking. That's awesome. And that leads me into our next subject, what we're talking about, and this one is outwork everybody. <laughs> And this is one that's like, what do you, what, I know, that, that just, that's hard and it's weird. And I don't really want to do that. It's like, okay, so everybody, you know, make it, make kind of like two columns on a sheet of paper. On, on one side, I want you to write your strengths, what you feel are your strengths. And then on the other side, I want you to write what you feel your weaknesses are. And it could be about skating. It could be, you know, just about, you know, who you are, what you'd like to see different change, whatever, but strengths on one side, weaknesses on the other. And I'm just going to give you a couple of minutes to write a few down. We'll talk about that. If anybody's ready, chime in. Abby, I know you're tired. Your strength right now is that you're gonna get you're getting some rest. That's really good. She's always under a blanket. I did this <laughs> earlier when I when you were asking for us to take account of our skill set. Yeah. Um, and I was just gonna say I don't I don't know if you're gonna say this. You probably are. So I'm sorry if I say it ahead of you, but 
one of the things that I know for sure is you, if you're doing the right thing for your skill set and for your passion, you will want to outwork everyone, right? Yeah. There will be nothing that stops you from wanting to outwork everyone. So I think that that alone is indicative of whether you're on the right path, right? If you're like, yes, and I don't want to work as hard as that person, then go find something that you do want to work that hard at because <laughs> we all have survival, right? As a, as a part of our human nature, we, we want to survive. So we definitely want to work hard enough to survive and excel and thrive at something it's just a matter of finding it so i just wanted to say that and, and it's also getting to that point where you actually have the you're formed enough to be able to really apply yourself at that level which is uh extraordinary go ahead michelle your mic's on oh i've had an example i've been buying and you share um i worked for shania twain for a while and then i worked for another musical artist who um, from a vocal standpoint had chops that were significantly better than Shania. Shania's not the best singer in the business. She, Shania outworked <laughs> everyone I have ever known in my life. She worked wow. harder than anyone I have ever known. And, and she was a success because of it. And people around her wanted to help her succeed because she worked harder than they did. So it made us all want to raise our level, make sure we kept up and, and lived up to, to That's her. Great. That's so a great she wanted example. that for herself, she created the success. Great. Uh, awesome. That is fantastic. Uh, who have I picked on? Izzy, strengths and weaknesses. What is your, give me one great strength and one weakness that you want to overcome. Well, one of my um, strengths that I know that I have, that I've stated a lot, is that I work really hard and I know I always do and I always strive to get better, but one of my weaknesses is just my mental and my mind is my own enemy because it can like bring me down sometimes and that's something that I'm that is controlling myself and giving myself positivity. So yeah. Okay. Great. Uh who else? How about you, Allie? Um, you mentioned it earlier. You said your strengths were tumbling and more athleticism, but as far as, yeah, go ahead. Yes. Uh, I do well with um, certain things like tumbling and flying, but uh, some other things that I find very helpful are my teamwork and perseverance when it comes to this, because cheerleading, it's a lot of different things combined. and other things like jumps I can't do, but the good thing about that is I don't have to be perfect at jumps because I have a whole other 24 people on the floor with me to help me out with that, and I can still use them to come out on top and be in front of all the other teams with all my friends. Yeah. Uh, that's great. Okay, cool. Anybody else want to share? All right. Well, here's here's kind of one thing, a, a bit of a story. I, I have a Oh yeah. Who, where is it? Sorry, my camera's flipped. Oh okay. There. Oh there you are. Hi Aurora. So I wrote down some of them, along with this bad drawing. Um. So some of my weaknesses are drawing hands. A very dead hand there. Double sow cows I've <laughs> not been able to do for a few months. Yeah. But double loops are a lot easier than double okay. sow cows, my opinion. Yeah. Group choreography. I've always struggled with group choreography. And I think I'm good at spinning. Great. That's a, that's a pretty and picture. Can you hold that up to the camera? I want to see that. Wow, that's really good. Thank you. You're a good artist. Yeah. So here's a and question most, I want to... Oh, go ahead. And most of the time, unless I'm really tired, I think I perform my programs well, but you'll have to ask my coaches. Oh, okay. 
All right, I'm just going to um, give you one concept and then we're going to go on to the next couple of things because they're really important. And that is um, every time I'm around my kids, I, I joke around with them. I always ask them this question. What is the greatest strength? Does anybody know the answer to this question? What is the greatest strength? Go ahead, Lexi. Your lack of weakness. Yes, we have a winner. I think Kelly got that one too. I knew Michelle knew it because she's heard it a million times. They get so sick of me asking that question. It's like, uh. so basically where you really want to, you know, you're, you're good at a lot of things and they're really fun to do, but the things that you're really weak at, you want to wear those out until you overcome it. Wherever you're weak, get strong. Dick Button used to pick on me all the time whenever they were doing a competition. And I would say, oh, he's doing really well here, but he's not very good at that. And it's like, ah. So I'd work on it so he never was able to say that again, right? So the greatest strength is a lack of weakness. You can write that down and figure out where you're weak and just do everything you can to strengthen that weakness until it's no longer a weakness. All right. Here's one thing that we all suffer from. How many people, I get, we talked about this on one of the other web webinars. How many people in this webinar have failed? Right. There they go. Everybody, everybody's failed. Right. So um, this is one that um, I really want to understand. Failure is a toxic entity. Um, if, if you choose to have it be a toxic entity, and it really undermines joy, it undermines confidence, it undermines, it's kind of acidic and it kind of wears you down over a while. People suffer all kinds of different failures, right? It could be um, embarrassment, sadness, lack of confidence, personal scars. Uh, sometimes people carry their failures their whole life. And, and why do we do that? It's because failure, even though everybody does it, and even though it's something that we can't avoid and we're gonna do lots of it, for some reason we've made such a villain of failure that it just sort of is sticky and it doesn't really need to be. Um, you know, we can all look at our biggest failure and, and how it shaped us or how it changed us or how it moved us. Um, but the main thing I want you to understand is failure is one thing and one thing only. Failure is only one thing. It's not all those other things that I talked about. Can anybody tell me what failure is? Anyone? Yes, Jennifer. Failure is information. Yes. <laughs> I wish I had prizes to give out. Um, failure is 100%. Its only ingredient is information. So if you fail at something, you fall at something, oh, I failed. Well then, okay, we gotta fix that, all right? You don't ever fall down and say, oh, it wasn't a failure, that was fine. And go on to the next thing. Failure is, is a teaching tool. Failure is something that allows us to understand where we need improvement. Failure is something that gives us that, it's like, why did I fail? And how can I avoid doing that again? And it's, it's really, um, it's really wild. I go back to when Max first started playing hockey and he was playing house league and they just got destroyed one game and he's got in the car and he was kind of like upset. And I could tell that he was really upset. And, and I go, are you okay? And he goes, I don't like losing. I just don't like it. It makes me upset and angry. And it's like, okay, let's break it down. What happened today? And he goes, well, the kids skate a lot faster than me. I go, okay, what does that tell you? And he goes, I got to skate faster. I go, right. What else? He goes, every time I had the puck, they took it away from me. And I said, well, that's kind of the nature of the game, isn't it? <laughs> no, I, just said, I go, what does that tell you? And he goes, that I need to work on my stick handling. And I go, exactly. I go, here's my question to you. What would you have learned today if you won? And he looked at me and he smiled and he goes, nothing. I go, exactly. <laughs> so Nelson Mandela has this great quote. It's like, I never, ever, ever lose. I either win or I learn. So I want you all, I'm going to empower all of you. And this is one thing that I want you to really just sort of embrace and, and absorb. And that is failure is not toxic. Failure is not poisonous. Failure is not a scar. Failure is not disfiguring. Failure doesn't last forever. Failure is 100% information and information only. You take what that failure was, you learn from it, and then that then you can rise above it but if you carry that thing around all your failures around on your back 
you are going to be so exhausted and so beat down and so uh, just beaten that you're never going to be able to kind of like just embrace the light and jump into this thing that really makes you happy. So failure is 100% information. That's it. Information, nothing more. Write it down. How many of you struggle with criticism? Yeah, Janice. Okay, Corey, Jennifer. Uh, Maria, Stephen, we all do, right? We all suffer in some way from criticism. Okay, good. That's all great. You're listening. I love that. Can more anybody tell me? I'm sorry? More self-criticism I struggle with than like hearing oh, criticism. Man. Okay. Well, then, then you're a good candidate for this next thing. Can anybody tell me how many forms criticism comes in? Abby and Scarlett. Abby and Scarlett. I think two because it's right. like I think two because it's right. like and uh, uh, and uh, okay. So I, I you you broke up a little bit. So what did you say okay, again? So I, you you broke up a little bit. So what did you say again? In factual. Factuals In factual. one and okay. Factuals one and okay. Okay. What do you think, Stephen? Okay. What do you think, Stephen? I was going to say constructive. And honestly, I, I I don't know what the second one would be. I only think of constructive, I guess, negative criticism, constructive criticism. So a positive okay, criticism sir. and a negative okay, criticism. Sir. That's good. Jennifer, you seem to have the answer to all my questions because I think you read the book. <laughs> Yeah, um, opinion. Yeah, uh, opinion. Opinion and fact, okay. right. It, it, it's whether it's negative or positive, it, criticism is criticism, but it's either opinion or fact. How many people have been like bullied or hated on social media? Okay, there's, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Isn't it funny that not one of those people that said something negative to you on social media would actually ever say it to your face? So in that way, you have permission to delete it because it's worthless. It means nothing. Now, if somebody comes up to you and they say something that is hurtful, but it's also true, is that a gift? Yes. So criticism, if it's fact, if it's based in fact, is such an enormous gift. It may not feel good at the time, but it's such a gift because it gives us something to work with. And it's like, thank you. I, I, I need to get better at this. I need to do better at that. I need to be, uh, whether I'm on time or I need to be whatever, more communicative or I need to just listen to my coaches, whatever that fact is, it's great. But if it's in opinion, if it doesn't feed you, delete it, just delete it. It, it don't carry it with you. Don't let it bother you. Don't let it have anything, no power over you at all. Opinion um, that is, you know, criticism that's based in opinion is worthless. And it and it and it it doesn't really offer anything unless, you know, if, if someone criticizes, whether it's it's positive and it's based in opinion, it's like, I like the way you look. Thank you. <laughs> but if somebody comes up and says, I don't like the way you look. It's just like, well, that's your problem. It's not mine, you know, and just press on. So the, the main things are that if something is based in fact, thank you, don't be hurt by it, don't be offended by it, just accept it as an extraordinary gift. And if, if you're getting information that's critical in its opinion, man, don't let it have any power over you. Don't let it, now I've had people, say this, say this, say this, say this, and it's and it's awful. But at the same time, it's like, why am I letting that person have power over me and authority over me when they're no better than I am? It's like, no, I'm not gonna let that happen. So if opinion is based in fact, it's a gift. But don't worry about any of this stuff on social media. Don't worry about any of the stuff um, that comes in the form of bullying because that's just meant to make you as miserable as the bully is. And, um, you know, we can we can show ourselves up in that way. So we talked about today, we talked about 
Um, what does it mean to finish first? Uh, knowing your purpose, uh, committed to the long haul, overcoming limitations, outworking everybody, failure as purely 100% information, and criticism in its two forms, fact and opinion. Um, you know, if you take each of these top topics and make it a daily habit, um, I honestly believe it'll change everything. Just really adapt, you know, adopt these and just allow them to do their work. Um, your results will improve, your training habits will improve, and you will change for the better, honestly, forever. And because as I've always said, you know, winning comes in all shapes and sizes, but winning changes everything. So let's all create a winning attitude, a winning um, approach, a winning philosophy. Let's just get out there and just build our war chest on either a few big wins at a time or a million little wins. But a win is a win is a win, and they will fortify you and they will help you reach your goals. Any questions real quick? We got like half a minute. <laughs> Anybody? Yeah, Janice. Not really a question, but it was just the image that came to mind while you were talking about our failures. I kept thinking of a rose and the failures being the thorns, like they don't feel good. But when you use them as the stepping stones to get to the rose at the top, it's kind of like the finish first image of like no, the sweet being the rose. I like that imagery. I like it a lot. Yeah. yeah. I was always the thorn. I was never the rose. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else? Yeah. Who's been quiet? Shatara, you want to share anything before we, we hang up today? Not really. Oh, okay. Was today helpful at all? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Good. Okay, good. Thank you, Shatara. Corey, you got Thank anything you, else? Corey, you got anything else? I, you know, I always have things, and you know, and every time and, and I hear you time, talk, Scott, it just hear gets my talk, wheels Scott, turning, just, and I want to thank you for planting some seeds because us. this is an awesome way to start the weekend. I think we all have an opportunity to go back and process all have an not just this amazing seminar, but the others that Scott um, facilitated with us this week, and we've got so much information now. You know, what what an awesome recipe for like mental emotional success so i just want to really thank you for um giving us something to like marinate on this weekend it's really really good stuff and thank you for your time and your energy and um just being here for all of these awesome athletes really really appreciate it scott uh, thank you steven did you have one more comment i saw you have your your mic on so you have thank your you. Well, thank, you so much, um, thank you so gonna, much for it um i was going to i was going to agree with uh Corey, 100%. I, I found this to be really uplifting and motivational and just a really great way to start the weekend because there's so much kind of negative stuff out there right now that it's really, really great to um, to tune in here and to get a, a, some really good positive ideas on how to better ourselves. And um, the one other thing that I, I thought was interesting that I didn't really see coming as I was doing the weakness and strength uh thing i didn't list my weaknesses and strengths and i was kind of having a hard time I'm mulling it over but one thing that came out was i saw that i actually felt that a strength that i have now used to be a weakness and i think that that sometimes we can look i think you touched on that sometimes we can look at what a weakness is and turn that in like you said to a to a strength and that's fantastic it was just all really great i really appreciate absolutely. it absolutely thank you yeah absolutely see you guys have yeah. a great well, week, guys. So honored that you joined us today. And I, I love you all. Stay healthy. Don't, you know, elbows only. No shaking hands. Keep your faces covered. Wash your hands. And uh, and just enjoy your families. This is a really sweet time where we're, we're, we're stuck at home and, and uh, we're in close quarters. And it's a gift. It truly is a magnificent gift. So enjoy every aspect of it. Um, so grateful for you all and can't wait to see you next week for another webinar. More right. homework. Yeah.